Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV today with a, I don't know, smaller, you might call it mid-size Arctic Fox fifth wheel here for you. Uh, brought you a couple of the trailers, brought you one of their bigger fifth wheels. I figure I'd bring you something kind of in between the mama bear, baby bear, papa bear kind of arrangement. And I'd let you folks, you tell me, which one do you like best and why? There's little things about them all that I like. I, I, love, I really like the heavy duty construction of these, but that also brings to light one point. Heavy duty means heavy weight most of the time, and that is certainly the case here. Uh, this thing is well into the 12,000 pound range, uh, completely empty. And that means where this is the kind of fifth wheel, uh, the size that a lot of manufacturers call their half ton class. And you know I'm already not a big fan of half tons and fifth wheels. I feel immediately this is not something that needs to be handled with a half ton. I don't think that's appropriate at all. Uh, if that's what you're looking for, maybe we have something else for you, but not this one. If what you're looking for though is, I want heavy duty, I want built, I want space, I want long lasting, but I don't want a giant 40 footer. That's where this one comes in right here. Um, it's it's an arrangement that I've seen before. I, I first saw it the first time from like Winnebago where it's just a giant dinette and a, a very cool door side sofa and like stuff slide basically. It's an interesting design that really helps keep the space in check, but what is interesting about this one is that the, the downstairs, what we would call living room, I actually think the focal point of this RV is the kitchen. The kitchen of this thing is incredible with the giant fridge, all the prep space, the countertop, uh, well, that would be the prep space. The cabinet space is what I was looking for. This thing's a rock star. And if you're looking for room to walk around a bed, if you're looking for CPAP function, you will like this bedroom. That is awesome. Folks, every now and then I see something and I go, why is this not required by the rest of the entire RV industry to do this? I was just working my way up these steps. I saw over here by the door handle, uh, or well, by the, the lock, there's a lock set on the handle itself. And I realized immediately where that could benefit you. You see, I don't know if you know this, but not everybody uh, teaches their kids to be respectful. And if you were at your destination and somebody flipped that handle over your door, unless you can shout out your window and get someone to come help you, the only way out is to basically SWAT team, hey boot kick that door down and break your, your handle, maybe rip screws out of your wall. Uh, nobody wants to do that, obviously. You can lock the handle so the unattended individuals around the campgrounds can't mess with your stuff. Or when you have it stored somewhere, it's just one more thing keeping the door shut. So let's say there's hot, cold expansion and contraction. I've seen that pop locked doors open. It's one more thing helping keep that door closed. I want every RV ever made from here forward to have that. That is amazing. Now I actually want to start upstairs. Give you a good look at that ceiling liner. You see that texture on this? This has a soft touch ceiling liner. That in conjunction with the fact that on these, you've got dual pane frameless windows. That is an insane noise reducing one, two punch. Not to mention the walls on this are a little bit thicker, which also helps keep the noise drown out. And that also, all that kind of combines to give you uh, a little bit better, more comfortable heating and cooling experience. In case you're curious, Northwood RVs have long been known uh, and, and very well respected in their hot, cold camp capacities. But it's funny, if you just look up the R values on these, they certainly don't have the most impressive R values because they actually report true R values, not uh, equivalent theoretical kind of things or something like that. Um, anyway, down here, what are we what are we looking at? Let's acknowledge a couple things, get them out of the way. There is some carpeting in the slide. You will see Northwood continue to use floor ducted heating. Uh, the floor heating is for, um, you know, heating effective purposes. The carpeting in the slide is just a classic thing that apparently they never got rid of. Uh, this floor plan, like I said, I've seen the general layout before, never executed quite like this to a more roughly uh, luxury level. And that's the thing about these Northwood RVs that I've really struggled. They don't fit into the industry standard buckets. Like calling it entry level, certainly not correct. Calling it luxury, um, it has some big features 
like a convection microwave and the giant fridge that feel like luxury features. It's not super glitz and glitter though. And it's like rugged luxury. It's comfortable. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's roughing it smoothly. I don't know what, it, how would you describe these things as we go through them? Now I said before, I think the kitchen is actually the star of this show, but, uh, let's work from the back. Let's work from the living room and work our way around. So first of all, You've got a direct facing entertainment center right here with an electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster down below. None of that is revolutionary by any means. I do like that big pocket to the left of the stereo head unit though, or if you wanna add like a Blu-ray player or something, you have room to do it. Plus there's all kinds of storage behind that. The question I think a lot of people are gonna have when you look at this, you say, wait a minute, Jack. The sofa looks like it's behind the island. How stupid, you can't even see it from the, the seat. I am currently at the right-hand theater seat, and this is my point of view right here. So when we turn around for point of reference, this is me all the way over here by this little pantry cabinet thing in the slide. You just saw my point of view here. Now, I am taller, so I can see over things pretty easily, but at the same time, I don't think there's really anything in your way unless you decide you want to put something big and giant on the countertop right there, which I don't know why you do that, because you'd be prone to bump it and knock it up, at least if you camp with me. I'm constantly knocking stuff around, and my wife's constantly telling me to knock it off. <laughs> and just to flip you back around real quick once again to have a look at that, uh, this one does a good job of giving us some good window coverage. It's tricky because they did go with big windows. It almost looks a little bare above that. Like, you're like, why isn't there a cabinet or something up there? There's not really enough room to have a good cabinet, and... How are you going to get to it? You're going to have to go walking all over the dinette. I don't know. It doesn't seem like the most fun thing to me. So I guess I kind of like what they did here. I'll show you this in a little bit. You see this big, like, telescopic table post right there. One, it, it mostly is effectively a no-knee knocker. The second thing is when you're sleeping on it, you actually maintain center support, which is really, really nice. Uh, working our way over here on the door side. Again, good window coverage over here. You see the blackout roller shades on everything. And then down below, this is a seriously multifunctional sofa right here. So your left and right seats are theater recliners. You do have the little vibrate massage function. You also have that handy dandy little uh, electric butt burner built into this thing. But more than that, comes with this handy little fleece throw blanket right here, which I, I don't know, man. Kick on that fireplace, put me under that thing. I will be asleep in T minus five minutes, guaranteed. Both, side, uh, both sides of the, the sofa have those little pivot kind of swivel stands as well. Pivot swivel stands, yep. Um, I, I am I'm from the de Department of Redundancy Department today. I can tell you the time in both London and England. <laughs> anyway, so what I was saying earlier is I think the kitchen is really like the star of the show on this one. And interestingly... Man, I'm trying to figure out where to actually begin showcasing all that stuff. And as weird as it sounds, I actually think I want to do a total 360 and kick over here to the dinette. First of all, under the dinette is pure storage. You have doors to access the sides. There is a, um, like a, a cargo door on the outside of it to access the rear bench, by the way. But I'm sure you've also noticed... There's some interesting goings on with the table over here. It can shift both side to side as well as back to front. And as I said, it just pushes down to become a sleeper when need be. Okay, so a couple things here. First of all, I... Wow. Wow. These cushions don't suck. I tell you what. Oh my gosh, compared to what I'm used to, this is just like a night and day difference. If, if you, you wanna take me for a weekend, I could totally make this work. I could totally make this work. And here's a couple reasons why. One, I'm tall. I got these big long legs. And the fact is, I can actually fit on this thing. So you can see how I've got these pillows up here. And yet there's still like literally a foot below my feet down here of extra space. Like, this is fantastic back here. Also, here's one of the other things I like about that table. I don't know about you, but when I wake up, I sit up like this, and then I pivot on my butt, and I scooch to the end of the bed. Now, look where I'm sitting right now. 
I'm dead in the middle of this sucker. If my fat butt were on a normal dinette table, you'd watch it go. And over time, if I slept on your dinette table with my fat butt, I would probably bend, buckle, and bow that sucker. Um, this is center supported. So you don't have to tell your guests scooch to the headboard or the foot area, which they're not going to remember to do. They can just get up and they can just use this like normal. This is, uh, <laughs> this is just way better than what you normally find out there. I like this a lot. All right, so storage kickoff right there. Moving our way around, uh, the whole kitchen entertainment combo uh, ends up becoming storage over here because you see the TV totally flips up and gets out of the way. These have an 18 cubic foot four door gas electric fridge. Um, at the time of this filming, I don't believe there are any sort of 12 volt or residential options offered by Northwood on these. Uh, this is just what they go with because again, the history of the market out west here where this manufacturer calls home uh, this is the refrigerator that is just overwhelmingly uh, requested. Uh, our channel has had a very heavy Midwestern focus over the years because that's where my family's dealership was located. So as a result, there's going to be a lot of things like that that uh, you know maybe are a little bit foreign to some of us. You saw the big convection microwave there, very large oven if you actually want to get in here and cook some real meals. Uh, there is, of course, a, uh, a shade for that skylight, though you're going to need a step stool to reach it. And anywhere that you see a ceiling vent fan in this, it's going to be one of those bigger vent fans. By default, this camper comes with three of them, which uh, I think is pretty darn awesome myself. Now, uh, take a look over here. We're going to call this a little coffee bar. Easy reach power outlets is also another thing that they're very good at here. You might notice uh, plenty of power outlets even right on the face of the island. Did you catch? Actually, hold on, because I love this, because I cry about this all the time. And finally, a manufacturer does something about it. Side splashes. Not just one, but both sides of the stove. Because why? Because grease does not go only sideways the way a lot of manufacturing uh, engineering agents uh, seem to think it does. They are, uh, unfortunately, they are wrong. There's a word for that, and it's called wrong. So down below here, just big uh, chunk of storage, whether you've got, I don't know, maybe bigger pots and pans or something like that. I would say nice space for a wastebasket if you took a shelf out, but they already included a space for that. And they included that handy little drop slot right there next to the combo farm and, I don't know, rinse it off veggie prep sink. You might notice all solid surface countertops all the way through here. Um, in the middle of this, I mentioned that there was, uh, maybe I didn't mention this, but the middle of the console, by the way, is a huge hidden trunk of storage effectively, which is very cool. They have maintained some classic storage overhead up here. And if you notice, like, look at the radius woodwork on the end of that cabinet. You'll find a bunch of little nice classy radius touches like that throughout this RV. But easily, my favorite thing I've personally found in this RV is right over here. So it's got this awesome like pantry built right into the, uh, or not pantry, but closet built right into uh, the slide out. I love that. I love that. I love it when stuff comes to you so you don't have to go to the stuff. And it's even got like almost like a little glove box or something built in the bottom of this. I absolutely love that. Now on the way through, pass our uh, master control panel right here. Along with that, uh, we've got our solar charge controller right there. Now it's blinking because the RV doesn't have a battery on it. It's like, oh, there's no battery, help me. Coming up here into the bedroom. Notice there's no big step up ankle breaker of death around the bed or anything like that. Instead, what we have is a 60 by 80 true queen with a couple excellent features and surprises. First of all, look at this. This is one of the very few factory mattresses I've seen that just isn't trash. <laughs> now, some bigger fifth wheels tend to do better, but that is a 60 by 80 residential double pillow top. Now, no one is ever going to be happy with one mattress. Like, there's never one mattress that's going to satisfy everyone is what I'm trying to say. But that is so much better. And I think it's another really good sign of the quality of material that they put into these coaches. Also helping you sleep is the fact that it's not like a box spring or something, but the strap system here, 
uh, it is way more forgiving than just sleeping on a sheet of OSB or something like that. And then you see just full unadulterated storage down below. And in case you're curious what's inside there, this actually comes with a pair of these handy dandy Arctic Fox camping chairs that frankly, uh, I would really like to have a couple of at my house because those are sturdy and they've also got the handy little side stand over there. We'll say that's for our coffee in the morning. I guess it all depends on uh, how you camp and what you prefer to consume while you do it. <laughs> And then over here, this is going to be the biggest bulk of our uh, personal storage space. So first of all, there are dresser drawers down there. And notice how deep that is. That's a cool thing about a north-south queen bed. There is more space to easily walk around the bed and make the bed. Not to mention the fact that you're enjoying these bigger, very open kind of CPAP-friendly side stands right there. Now, you see how there's a white remote control on the right-hand side of the bed over there? That goes up here to this uh vent so that if you wanted to be able to lay in bed and get some fresh air rolling you could do that but you notice how there's a power junction box next to it it is prepped for a second air if that is your interest as well um what are we missing oh i almost forgot the bathroom don't want to do that not that i haven't done that before it's kind of a frustratingly annoying thing that i've done a few times so uh, the nicer countertop material, the stainless sink kind of hardware you see persists all the way through here. And then, like, again, a, a classic, but what was a sign of some very high-end things in the past, the, uh, the reversible lit magnification mirror over here so you can get yourself ready before you leave. Now, you notice how built into the slide, because the slide actually extends partially into the bathroom, you have the bulk of your bath storage as well. Something that really does surprise me, though, about these is how they are still using a corner angle shower, not at least a radius shower to grant you a little bit more elbow room. That is one thing I'd like to see on this, although the headroom in it is fantastic. Again, that's one of those bigger vent fans. And notice how there's a the little door stopper up top next to the vent fan. So if you fling the door open, it doesn't smack against that porcelain bowl stool, stool down there, which also has some very good uh, space available for a bigger person. Now, the road mode function on this one, I found kind of interesting. Like, obviously, you know, if you got to totally get into the bed, and again, like, that's one of the things, a walk-around bed, a CPAP-friendly bed, those are things that, like, a lot of people say they want, but it's weirdly much, much easier to find those in a non-bed slide RV. Now, over here, this is kind of uh, like one of those things like, huh, okay, they did it that way. Instead of a sliding pocket door, it actually, the, this door, you notice, is mounted on the slide. Now, for transit, you got to make sure that you, you, you catch that thing in place. Uh, to get to the, like, you can totally use the bathroom in transit mode, but you do need to, like, come in here, you know, put your butt against the, the bathroom sink, and then you can open and close the door as needed. Downstairs, though, was better than I thought. It's not awesome, but, like, I I, I think I could deal with it for a quick travel stop. Because, like, you know, you walk in, you got drawer space, we can get to the sink. But the fridge, because this is a normal kitchen slide, but it's a wide-body RV, the island is shifted over a little bit. So you can walk through here, you could get back to the dining, and you can't totally open the refrigerator. But depending on what it is, you could kind of reach in here. It's not fantastic access obviously to that fridge but it is potentially serviceable as long as you're aware of that and you plan accordingly for your travel stops and if you appreciate how we take the time to showcase that kind of stuff for you make sure you hit that subscribe button and in the meantime we will hop outside do you hear that sounds like an air raid siren <laughs> Actually, I, I think that siren was uh, a, a little local alarm. The uh, local loony bin discovered that Uncle Josh done escaped. <laughs> anyway, I'm currently trying not to roll my ankle on some loose stones here, so sorry if I'm a little further away than normal. Something I should have done a much better job of discussing on the inside of the RV is how this is a 102-inch wide-body rig. It's eight and a half foot wide with a wide-body chassis to support that. Because again, build comes first from what I've seen with Northwood RV. 
But even though this is one of their smaller fifth wheels, it still has those same big features that you find on their bigger rigs, like that Moride shock dampening pin box, Goodyear uh, endurance radial package. And if you're looking at the uh, under the skirt kind of line thing on this, it actually is the smallest fifth wheel I have ever seen that still uses six point automatic leveling. The stability on this thing when you get to your destination is going to be absolutely unparalleled, folks. They're using bigger water heaters on these, so if you want to take some more back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back showers, you can. Enclosed, protected uh, docking center, battery disconnect where cargo can't smash it, black tank flush, all the good stuff. Everything you expect from a nice, high-class fifth wheel. Like, I like, you no, know, everything's up high. Again, shifting cargo, not going to smash it. With this being one of their smaller models, though, it does not have the largest front cargo space I've ever seen. Unless you also count this gigantic front space up here, which uh, I think definitely counts. Now, you can also, you see those junction boxes in there. You can also um, uh, put a generator in this thing, which is why that baggage door has that little punch out right there where that diamond plate is located. Uh, working our way around, finishing up the storage. This is something else that's really, really uncommon. They're using dual 40 pound propane tanks. This has 80 pounds of propane in it. Uh, versus 20 or 30 pound tanks. It's just a, a, I don't know, I think very cool thing. Better look at that uh, pass-through compartment from the other direction here. This right here, like it's cool that they have outside TV hookups, but there's no way to like run the cables down and outside without leaving that baggage door open the whole time, which not my favorite. If I back up a little bit, you might notice the awning actually has a protective shroud on it, which is something I really like on these. Uh, Rockwood does a lot of that in their signature series or the, the Flagstaff classics, as it were. Those are the exact same thing. So when it's in uh, retracted mode like it is right now, the sun's not just eating the awning, you know? Now off the back side here, this has one of my favorite things to talk about. If you think about it, you got a dinette on the rear wall. Notice how there's a baggage door on the rear cap of this thing. That is what I lovingly refer to as the junk in the trunk storage system. <laughs> you know, RVs, they can do side bends or sit-ups, but please don't lose that trunk. <laughs> Notice too, I mean, all the way around it, it's pure storage all the way around. One thing I can tell you here, it says this rear hitch, it says do not use for towing. It's got a 500 pound load limit on it though. I keep talking about the build of this thing and how it's built so solid. Rear hitches in RVs are almost usually 300 pounds because the chassis manufacturer that most of the industry uses, that's all they really build for. Well, again, Northwood builds their own chassis so they can build it to a thicker, heavier duty standard. Kind of like this ladder back here. I don't know what it's rated for. I know that when my fat butt gets on it, it doesn't shift, wiggle, or flinch in the slightest bit. And that makes me feel good. Another area I can really kind of show you some things because most of the construction aspects, they're hidden. Like I can tell you how, where the aluminum superstructure, where they screw into it, they stuff it with wood so that it doesn't crimp and crush the tubing, but you can't see that. But what you can see is the crazy thickness of the roof up there. Now this is their base package. Every Northwood comes with a 45 watt uh, solar battery tender in and of itself, nothing to really write home about, but uh, it does, when the RV's in storage like this, help keep the battery topped off, which is nice, so that when you go to, you know, hitch up to it and hit your power leveling jacks, they're going to be powered up, they're going to be ready to go. Um, just little things like that make a big difference. And if you are looking for a more custom solar package, you know, these are actually right next to me, little examples of some work that we've done for clients out of this store right here. We've got a great shop at this facility. We could custom craft you nearly any solar solution. And that's something I've really learned from some more of our uh, Western based dealerships like this. Um, solar is something that's been around far more commonly out here versus in the Midwest that I call home. In the Midwest, we're, we almost always park camp out here. A lot of people are off grid and have been for years way before it was cool. So the stores out here, they know how to build solar. So we got you a nice selection of some different, uh, you know, Nash and Arctic Fox and different things here for Northwoods. What have you enjoyed seeing? What would you like me to dive into a little further? Is there a model you're looking for that I haven't covered yet? Leave me some notes and maybe you can help guide me on the, the next one as I kind of apparently worm my way through this 
job that I do. I don't know. Anyway, if you'd like to see where we have one of these in stock and what we're running, check the link in the description for pricing and availability. And remember, they're on wheels. We can ship them to you. We can transfer from store to store. We can do all kinds of things for you. When you're ready, we're ready. So until uh, next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.